Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 8th of June. Foreign Ministers of India and Iran hold talks in New Delhi to boost ties. Raging inflation squeezes poor in Pakistan, PM stresses on political stability for economic growth. And Human Rights Watch raises concerns, says violations of women's rights in Taliban led Afghanistan growing. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar held wide-ranging talks with his Iranian counterpart Hossein Ahmed Abdullahian on Wednesday against the backdrop of widespread anger in West Asia over controversial remarks on Prophet Muhammad made by two former spokespersons of India's ruling Bhatia Janta Party. Abdullahian is on a three-day visit to India with an aim to further enhance the bilateral ties as well as to discuss key regional and global developments. It is the first visit to India by a senior minister of a member nation of Organization of Islamic Cooperation after the controversial remarks triggered anguish among the Islamic world. India has categorically rejected its criticism and denounced the remarks. Iran has been a key country for India in the Gulf region. The two sides have been jointly focusing on improving connectivity between Southeast and Central Asia. India has also been in touch with Iran over the developments in Afghanistan following the Taliban takeover last year. The Iranian National Security Advisor had also attended a regional conclave hosted by India on the Afghan crisis last November. The Reserve Bank of India's key interest rate was raised by 50 basis points on Wednesday, the second hike in as many months in a bid to cool persistently high inflation in Asia's third largest economy. The Reserve Bank of India, RBI, on Wednesday hiked the policy repo rate by 50 basis points to 4.9% and raised the inflation projection for the current financial year to 6.7%. RBI Governor Shakti Kantadas announced that the Monetary Policy Committee MPC has voted unanimously to increase the key interest rate with immediate effect. The standing deposit facility rate and the marginal standing facility rate were adjusted higher by the same coin term to 4.65% and 5.15% respectively. The central bank also dropped the long-standing phrase that future policy would remain accommodative, reinforcing expectations of further rate hikes and other forms of tightening in coming months, as fighting inflation becomes its main focus. The MPC voted unanimously to increase the policy repo rate by 50 basis points to 4.90%, with immediate effect. Retail inflation in April accelerated to 7.79% from a year earlier, above the RBI's tolerance band for inflation of 2% to 6% for a fourth month in a row, and a further rise in global prices of crude oil, food and other commodities is expected to keep up the upward pressure. The price spikes have hammered consumer spending and darkened the near-term outlook for India's economic growth which slowed to the lowest in a year in the first three months of 2022. The RBI raised its inflation projection for 2022-23 to 6.7 percent from 5.7 percent earlier, while maintaining its growth projection at 7.2 percent. Meanwhile, Indian shares ended lower for a fourth session on Wednesday after the central bank's rate hike. At close, the NSE Nifty 50 index fell 0.37 percent to 16,356.25 and the S&P BSC Sensex was down 0.39% at 54,892.49. In news from Pakistan, 
Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has said that the country's economy cannot be streamlined without political stability as he addressed a pre-budget business conference in Islamabad on Tuesday. The South Asian nation is facing a widening current account deficit that has left Pakistani to go through unbearable rising food prices amid a double-digit inflation. Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif stressed on the need for political stability for economic growth while addressing a pre-budget business conference in Islamabad on Tuesday. He said that no matter what happens, whichever party comes into power, goals set in Charter of Economy should remain unchanged. Sharif, who took office in April, told the seminar that he inherited a broken economy with shrinking reserves, unmanageable external debts and huge fiscal deficit. He said the current year will post historical fiscal deficit of 27.19 billion US dollars. The country doesn't have money for oil and gas, he added. So it is intertwined, interlinked. At the cost of reputation, I am saying Charter of Economy. Come and sit on this decision. Pakistan's inflation rate rose to 13.8% in May, the highest in two and a half years. The economic meltdown has led to worst power cuts and unbearable rising food prices, leaving Pakistanis, especially like Ansar Mai, a widow and mother of three, to feel the pinch. Ansar, who works as a domestic help in Karachi, says every penny counts for her amid the double-digit inflation. The country's central bank said earlier it expected inflation to remain elevated in the wake of the government removing the fuel and power subsidies to secure International Monetary Fund or bailout money. Economists fear a big number of people from low-income groups or the lower middle class will slide into poverty as a result of current inflation. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban authorities in Afghanistan have imposed severe policies and practices that are restricting the human rights and freedoms of Afghan women and girls. Highlighting the challenges and growing restrictions, a high-ranking Human Rights Watch official Heather Bar said the list of Taliban violations of the rights of women and girls is long and growing. Heather Bar, Associate Director of the Women's Rights Division at Human Rights Watch, has raised concerns about the rights violation in Afghanistan, saying list of Taliban violations of the rights of women and girls is long and growing. When the Taliban announced last month that the women and girls should not leave their homes unless necessary and should do so only with their whole bodies, including their faces covered, only a few were surprised. Others who lived through the last period of Taliban rule from 1996 to 2001 were not. She said Afghan women's rights activists warn all along that the Taliban's promises to respect women's rights were false. The Taliban appointed an all-male cabinet they abolished the Ministry of Women's Affairs and replaced it with the Ministry of Vice and Virtue, which issued the most recent order. They banned secondary education for girls and banned women from almost all jobs. They dismantled the system to protect women and girls from violence and made it difficult for them to get health care. They issued new rules for how women must dress and behave. According to Barr, not only does it make every woman or girl who is outside her home a suspect, but it also strips women and girls of the shreds of autonomy they still had. Since the Taliban takeover, there have been many statements condemning their abuses from an impressive range of international and regional organizations and countries. What there has not been, however, is a clear plan for how the countries condemning Taliban abuses will work together to defend the rights of Afghan women and girls and pressure the Taliban to end these abuses. When news from Sri Lanka, 
Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday said he had requested the International Monetary Fund, IMF, to send a staff-level delegation to the crisis-hit country as soon as possible to finalize a staff-level agreement. The Prime Minister explained that negotiations regarding bridging finance was reliant on Sri Lanka and the IMF concluding a staff-level agreement. Vikramasinghe's office said in a statement, Sri Lanka, an island nation of 22 billion people, is currently reeling under its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. It is in talks with the IMF for a loan package to help navigate its worst economic crisis. The crisis led to a shortage of foreign exchange that stalled imports of essential items such as fuel, medicine and fertilizer, provoking devaluation, street protest and a change of government. Moving on to news from Nepal. Authorities in Nepal have deployed security forces to escort garbage trucks from the Kathmandu Valley to the new Banchare landfill site among protests by locals. Residents have demanded immediate implementation of an agreement with the government to improve infrastructure in the areas near the landfill site before the dumping begins. Authorities in Nepal have resorted to use force, deploying security forces from Tuesday onwards to escort and dump garbage from the Kathmandu Valley to the new Banchare Danda and the Sistol landfill sites as agreement with locals again hit a snag. Garbage dumping trucks going towards the Banchare landfill site pass through Sistol, where the road condition is pathetic. The locals have rejected the terms of the agreement with the Ministry of Urban Development that has approved grant for infrastructure development and provide them health insurance. They, however, demanded for full implementation of previous agreements before the dumping begins. Agitating group of locals came onto the roads on Tuesday, preventing garbage-containing trucks to move forward, which also resulted in a clash with the police. Reportedly, 14 people were detained for the entire day while the police escorted garbage trucks to the site. I The Kathmandu Valley on a daily basis produces about 1200 metric tons of waste from businesses and households, which has continued to pile up in streets, posing health hazards. While the municipal body has not been able to move them to landfill sites, for over two months. Scores of devotees, especially Kashmiri pundits from across the world, flocked to India's northern Jammu and Kashmir to celebrate the annual Kheer Bhavani festival on Wednesday. The festival was held after a two year hiatus due to the COVID 19 pandemic and in the backdrop of a recent spurt in violence in the region. Harmony reigns supreme as scores of devotees, especially Kashmiri pandits, arrived at the revered Kheer Bhavani shrine in India's Jammu and Kashmir to mark an annual religious festival on Wednesday. The Kheer Bhavani festival is held on the eighth day of the lunar fortnight of Cheshit Mand in the Hindu calendar. Devotees carried rose petals and walked barefoot to the temple of the goddess Raganya Devi and offered milk and kheer, a rice pudding, at the sacred spring pond. The festival was held after a gap of two years due to COVID-19 pandemic and in the backdrop of a recent upsurge in targeted killings of non-Muslims in the region by terrorists of Pakistan-based terror outfits. The devotees prayed for peace to prevail in the Kashmir Valley. It's a moment of pride. It's a moment of pride. आज थोड़ा कमी ये लगी कि लोग शायद कम हैं और कम भी थे क्योंकि थोड़ा डर का माहौल पैदा किया गया क्योंकि नहीं चाहता पाकिस्तान की यहां अमन हो कश्मीरी हिंदू मुसलमान सिख शांति में बैठे आतंकवाद मुक्त में बैठे The annual Kheer Bhavani festival is seen as the biggest symbol of communal harmony as Kashmiri pundits and Muslims gather together to mark the occasion well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.